Hello and welcome. I'm Eric Schatzker. A massive public health crisis has had a massive impact on corporate earnings, and not just on the bottom line. Companies around the world are withdrawing guidance, suspending dividends, and reworking their strategies to reflect this grim new reality. Let's start with Wall Street. Financial institutions set aside billions to cover losses on bad loans. Among U.S. banks, J.P. Morgan's provisions increased more than five-fold from a year ago. At Goldman Sachs, they almost quadrupled. At the same time, borrowers are pressuring banks by drawing down credit lines. Morgan Stanley's report highlighted both the good and the bad. While market volatility drove a spike in trading revenue, bad loan provisions and write-downs led to an 8% drop in revenue. I spoke with Chairman and CEO James Gorman the day after Ray Dalio told me he expects the economic fallout from COVID-19 to be worse than the financial crisis of 2008. Gorman wasn't quite so pessimistic. The economic impact, the GDP uh, decline is obviously much worse, but it's so specific and it's built around the virus. From our perspective in running a company, there's you know a few things you've got to focus on. Number one, We've got millions of clients trading trillions of dollars all over the world. Our plant has to work. We have to be able to facilitate clients doing that so they can manage their businesses. They, they have to have the ability to manage their own liquidity and funding and capital needs. And we play a critical role in that in the number one equities player in the world, one of the largest wealth managers in the world, one of the largest capital markets businesses, et cetera. The second thing is you do your bit. I mean, we, we voluntarily cut back on our buyback to zero. Uh, we thought it was best to preserve our capital to support our clients in need. Third thing is to make sure that our teams are properly coordinated given the remote isolation everybody's going through. And we spend an enormous amount of time communicating with them setting up plans, what would it like to be like to bring people back to work, starting to think about what the future might look like. What about the broader economy? How do you fathom or, or even model the kinds of dislocation unemployment on that scale is going to produce, James? Yeah, this, I mean, what's the shock to the global economic system is something we haven't seen since the Great Depression. You can't model this. I mean, what you've got to do is preserve your capital, make sure you're well positioned to deal with the risks, understand the risks you're taking on as a business, and manage your way through that in a way where the whole team, as I said, is working together. We have, you know, daily operating committee calls. We have risk committee calls constantly. The whole team is organized around how do we ensure that A, we're doing our job for our clients, and B, that Morgan Stanley remains stable during a period of incredible dislocation. Many European banks also saw profits curtailed by loan loss provisions. With the ECB predicting a deep recession, the lending environment could get even bleaker. Top executives from across the sector spoke with Bloomberg, starting with Credit Suisse CEO Thomas Gottstein, who recently took the helm following a high-profile spying scandal. It was a baptism of fire, as you said. Um, I didn't expect that when I took the role on the 14th of February, but uh, within less than a month, uh, a lot of things have changed. Having said that, I'm actually very pleased with our results. It was the, a record net income of 1.3 billion, 13% return on tangible equity. With respect to assumptions, we clearly yeah. um, assume a significant reduction in GDP in the second quarter uh, uh, of roughly 20% 20, 20 in the US and in the high single digits in Europe and in Switzerland. And for the full year, we expect uh, recessions not only in the US, but also in Europe and, and to less, less extent uh, in Switzerland, but also for Switzerland, our models assume a recession for this calculation. Our credit losses uh, during last quarter is the outcome of a, uh, a strategy and a, a clear uh, risk reward uh, priorities we put in place uh, how, on how we manage uh, uh, the financial resources of the bank. And, uh, and it's also reflecting a very effective uh, uh, way of uh, for us to manage risks uh, on a on a short term basis, and last but not least is also reflecting the fact that our business model uh, sees a, a high degree of concentration in uh, in in, uh, in lending exposure in Switzerland, and in general to uh, um, uh, asset based lending. Uh, so where we have a high degree of uh, uh, of uh, of um, uh, um, underlying uh, guarantees. Therefore, uh, we, you know, we can be relatively uh, 
um, uh, optimistic about the extent at which uh, credit losses will impact our future. You know, of course, we also going to be affected by that. Our provision overall for impairment in the first quarter was 2.1 billion pounds. Of that, 1.4 billion pounds was basically uh, what we think might happen to our consumer and 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 corporate credit business uh, if we had a very difficult economic scenario play out for the rest of the year. So we take forecasts uh, around unemployment. For instance, the unemployment forecast we use for the U.S. was 17 percent. We take a GDP reduction, uh, which was quite severe uh, in the forecast for the second and third quarter, and you run those forecasts through your credit models, and the models uh, punch out uh, a 1.4 billion uh, pound uh, reserve. If because of the government response, which is so robust, uh, around the world starts to mitigate uh, the contraction in the economy, then that will free up reserves uh, later on. So we think we have been prudent, but it shows, given the inherent profitability of the bank, that we can take a reserve like that and still make some 600 million pounds of after-tax profit.